So when we're looking at the radial ulnar joint, and we're looking at it both proximally and distally, we notice that the, the radius is convex on a concave, and then all of a sudden it changes to concave on convex. So as we go more distal, and as we saw in the hand and wrist itself, our arthrokinematics become a little bit more important as we're looking at it. In reality, when we're looking at pronation and supination, we can't say, oh, it's the fault of this joint or this joint. They work in synchrony with each other. So as we're extending, we get this pronation component. And with this, it, it becomes a radius and ulna working in synchrony. It's not just a radius moving under a fixed ulna. And we'll do a little experiment in a, in a second so that you can see that. But when you're mobilizing these joints individually, if you're fixing the concave part and moving the convex, then you're going to notice the arthrokinematics are going to be a little bit different here and here. So one good way to start is just palpate pronation and supination and see where you fi figure the biggest restriction is and then do the appropriate glide like a mobilization with movement into pronation or into supination, into the direction where the restriction is and see if that decreases pain or increases mobility. And do the same as you move uh, distally as well. Uh, the point behind that is, and having taken classes from Brian Mulligan, when we get to this point in the class, the arthrokinematics get discombobulated in your head. And you'll see already, I have flipped terms every now and then. But the treatment, the patient doesn't care if you understand where the glide is. It's important as we test, and it's good to, account, to be accountable. That's how we're experts. But in reality, what Mulligan did was he was like, OK, I'm going to push it one way. If that doesn't work, I'm going to push it the other way. So we have for reference in the resource guide everything you need to know to know about the appropriate arthrokinematics and osteokinematics. But when you have that person who has a restriction in pronation or supination at the time, realize there's multiple joints that can be involved, including the joints in the hand and wrist that we're going to have to mobilize. If there's no pain involved, you're not going to have to really do a ton of oscillations. Your choices are a constant stretch or manipulation. The functional components with uh, elbow extension is pronation. And with elbow flexion is supination in that it's a combination of all those bones moving together. Start with that big picture and then work your way into the arthrokinematics as opposed to starting at the arthrokinematics and then the patient in front of you won't get the treatment because you're afraid you're going to do the glide in the wrong direction. That's what we have a resource guide for. That's what we have the references for. So I think that's an important starting point when we get to this, this area.